Let's talk about fentanyl, specifically the concept of fentanyl exposure. So backing up really quick, fentanyl is not a new drug. Fentanyl exposure is not a new phenomenon. Yet publicity of fentanyl exposure appears to be at an all-time high. Why are people freaking out over fentanyl exposure so much now? Let's back up again. When was fentanyl introduced? Fentanyl was discovered in the late 1950s and was approved for medical use in the 1960s. It has been widely used since then, and it is one of the most widely used drugs in medicine because it can be used safely and effectively. It is valuable for the treatment of pain, for sedation, and it is even considered a World Health Organization essential medication. But fentanyl started showing up in street drugs outside of medical use in the 1970s and started creating problems very early on. When it is an unexpected drug, comes in an unknown dose, and comes mixed with other things, and is used outside of medical settings, it can be unsafe. That's why we have so many overdoses today, which are almost entirely non-medical fentanyl. Outbreaks of fentanyl overdoses in the 1970s and 80s even prompted a congressional hearing on the topic. Interestingly, at the time, there was concern that fentanyl could be a risk for others who came into contact with it because of its potency. Needless to say, that did not pan out. Fast forward to the more recent past and even to today. We are in the middle of a crisis of overdoses secondary to fentanyl in our supply of street drugs. This isn't sporadic contamination. This has affected the majority of the drug supply. Fentanyl is now the norm rather than the exception, and many people are dying every day. So it makes sense that fentanyl is more talked about now than it ever has been before, and that's why it is unavoidable to hear about it. But when did people start talking about fentanyl exposure? Where did this concept of its danger really come from? Sometime around 2016 or 2017, give or take, it seems like stories started popping up about mostly police, other law enforcement, and first responders having overdoses just from touching or being near fentanyl and other powders. Sometimes there were even videos with pretty dramatic and maybe even graphic appearing effects. So what's really going on here? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about the risk of fentanyl exposure. Because fentanyl is an old drug, and one that is used ubiquitously in medicine, it is well studied and well understood. We know what it does and how it works. We know what it can do and even have pretty good understanding of how to treat and prevent the problems that it can cause. Fentanyl can be absorbed through the skin, but the word can is doing a lot of work in that sentence. A piano can fall on your head when you cross the street. Your skin is a really good barrier, and fentanyl can only go through under very specific conditions. Namely, it would require massive amounts and a very long time. It wouldn't just happen by accident. And let's talk about the fentanyl patch. It is designed to absorb through the skin specifically, and the patch formulation of fentanyl illustrates the point that fentanyl does not really absorb through skin. Because despite decades of research and tons of money from the top mines and deepest pockets that the pharmaceutical industry could come up with, and decades of attempts, the best formulation to get fentanyl through the skin still takes at a minimum three and more likely around 12 hours to reach a therapeutic dose, and the vast majority of the drug does not get absorbed. So not a brief touch with a small amount, not at all. If you covered both of your palms, which would likely absorb more easily than other skin with fentanyl patches, completely covered, it would still take 14 minutes to even receive a standard dose commonly used for treatment of pain. It's also worth remembering that these patches are not the same low-potency dry powder that is encountered on the street. They're a new product. Fentanyl also has a very low vapor pressure, which is a physics concept that relates to its ability to aerosolize. Fentanyl does not aerosolize under everyday conditions. It does not under most conditions found on Earth. People can snort it, but this is intentional. It does not just get into the air. To cause toxicity from breathing it in, you would probably have to be in a wind tunnel with dunes of fentanyl around you. There is a famous incident that comes up in this discussion involving a siege by Russian security forces on a theater in Moscow that had been occupied by insurgents who had taken hundreds of hostages. The Russian forces eventually got inside the building and killed all the insurgents. In the process, they also killed more than 100 of the hostages and injured an estimated 700 more, many of whom ended up hospitalized. Why am I talking about this? Well, nobody knows for sure what substance the Russians had pumped into the theater to take out that many people. But the information that we do have is that in some of the foreign nationals who left the country and underwent testing, Remy fentanyl and car fentanyl, two analogs of fentanyl, were detected on their clothing. The Russian government has even admitted 
that something else was involved besides these fentanyl analogs, but because all anyone was able to detect was the fentanyl, people believed that it must have been aerosolized fentanyl, despite no real evidence that it was. Given their resources, this could have even been the dunes in a wind tunnel scenario. Or it could have been mixed into a solution with something else. Nobody knows. At the very least, this took a major military and would have been incredibly expensive to get enough fentanyl to do this. It isn't comparable to settings where fentanyl is encountered outside of Russian military sieges. At the end of the day, this situation has never been recreated. And since we don't have many of the actual details, it isn't something to rely on. So why does this kind of coverage seem so pervasive now? Why does it keep coming up if it can be easily answered? Well, that's a great question. First of all, it's scary. Fentanyl is killing tens of thousands of Americans. It has become a boogeyman. Second of all, there is enough awareness of things like fentanyl patches and the Russian theater siege to lend a kernel of believability to this idea. And something does seem to be really happening in these stories and these videos. They are real symptoms prompting people to seek medical care. Can we say what? Well, we can say what they are not. And they are not fentanyl overdoses. None of these reports are consistent with an overdose, and the most often description of symptoms is actually the opposite of a fentanyl overdose. For example, fentanyl reduces anxiety. It makes people relax rather than panic, and it doesn't cause things like rapid breathing, increased heart rate, or the nonspecific symptoms that are reported like lightheadedness and dizziness. What fentanyl overdose does look like is someone sleepy to the point of unconscious and breathing slowly or not at all. It's literally the opposite. Plus, it would be easy enough to test for the presence of fentanyl. So if the stories don't seem to show any signs of stopping, what can we do? Knowing what an overdose looks like is important, and it might help you save a life. Knowing the science behind fentanyl can take away some of its boogeyman specter. It's just a molecule. It can only get into your system if you are injecting, snorting, or ingesting it. And if you could overdose just by touching it, nobody would go to the lengths of injecting it. The more you know, stay informed and stay safe.